Hi, everybody. Dan Oldman, Mike Beer, the feature race at Belmont Park on Saturday. Race number six is the grade three poker. We're going a mile on the Widener turf. $250,000 is the purse. Let's take a look at this field. This race only drew five, but two of them trained by Chad Brown. And hey, they're the two favorites on the morning line. Mason's going to be real tough, Mike. Yeah, Mason is the morning line favorite. Going to be real tough. I, I agree with you there. Um, Chad's other horse, I think, also has a legit shot at this race, public sector. The others, yeah, it's going to be, it's it's sort of an uphill climb for the three of them. Public sector is also cross-centered at Monmouth. It appears as of Thursday afternoon that Chad is going to run him here in the poker. We'll throw up the time from U.S. Pace Projector. Short field. We don't expect a lot of pace. The five Wolfies Dyna Ghost is likely the speed of the race with Mason sitting second. And that was the situation in the Seek Again Stakes at Belmont last month. And Mason ran right by Wolfies Dyna Ghost. Yeah, the local prep for this race um, had an even shorter field um, than the actual poker. Then only three in that race. And you're right, Mason just was happy to concede to Wolfie's Dynaghost, um, had no trouble dispatching that horse in the stretch. Um, maybe they'll ride him the same way here, but he has the rail. He has speed. He could go if he wants to. Let's talk a little bit about Mason, the uh, likely favorite in this race and the most likely winner on paper. Two starts in North America, two triple-digit buyer speed figures just missed in the Maker's Mark Mile in his North America debut for Chad. And then here's the race we talked about this week again. It only drew a three-horse field. Uh, Manny Franco kept this one on the outside. He's taken the lead, and it's off to the races. It's a public workout. Yeah, I mean, he he really did have this field over a barrel once it scratched down to uh, three, and you see how easily he put away Wolfie's Dyna Ghost, who just dropped out of your picture there. Um, I don't know, Dan, either one of his two starts since he got here, just, you know, sort of make him several lengths faster than these horses. He's not going to be compromised by pace. He's way the horse to beat. Although Sanctuary City has yet to win a stakes race, it's not for lack of trying and it's not for running well. He's multiple stakes placed, albeit mostly against New York breads. And he ran very well last time out for Jimmy Ferraro in the Kingston for state breads. Let's watch that race at Belmont on May the 30th of the mile and the 16th. We see him swinging to the outside, turning for home. He's going to come with a good run to finish second. He's now finished second in all three races this year. And his lack of early speed probably works against him a bit in this short field. Uh, it really does. Uh, he's rock solid, though. He shows up every time This that we're watching right now here in the Kingston. Typical stuff uh, from Sanctuary City. He always shows up and runs. It's often not good enough, Dan. He's a real, real nice horse. Uh, he ran a good fourth in this race last year, actually, but that race set up perfectly for him with a fast pace. Bill Mott sends out the number three penalty, second start off of a layoff, second start listed as a gelding. This horse, when he was in his prime, you could argue was a bit of an in and outer. Now we're not sure what we're going to get at the age of seven. He made his first start off the layoff in the elusive quality going seven eighths. And I wonder if Mott just really used that race as a prep. He sort of just was buried down inside, never really got into it from the back of the pack. I think he gained a lot from a fitness standpoint. He's going to have to improve. Yeah, he is. Maybe he just really needed that race um, off the layoff, Dan, maybe. And it was just a prep to get him back to the poker, which he ran in last year. Um, man, he really didn't do a lot, though, in that elusive quality. Had a good pace in front of him, was rated back, saving ground, and just never really ran. Um, I suppose he'll run better here. If, even if he does, I don't know if it's going to be good enough. Uh, he does have a little bit of tactical speed, however. Perhaps he can try to get close to the expected moderate pace, stretching out a furlong in his second race back. Public sector is, quote, the other Chad. And when you're the other Chad, you're a multiple graded stakes winner like public sector, who reeled off three in a row last year at, in New York before running a good fourth in the Hollywood Derby. He's only run once this year in the Turf Classic, Mike, and he probably needed it against a good field off the layoff. Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't be too hard on him. He also looked a little bit fresh early in that turf classic, Dan. Um, Irad sort of took a good hold of him and took him back. He also spent a lot of time down on the inside, which may not have been a great place to be over that Churchill turf course, which they are no longer running over now. Um, so a lot of excuses um, to be made for his return from the left. He was, you know, a really good three-year-old, multiple graded stakes winner. Not that hard to argue that, you know what, maybe he would have won a, that grade one Hollywood Derby at the end of the year, Dan. He didn't get a, a very lucky trip in that race. Wolfie's Dyna Ghost completes the field. Now he's won on all three surfaces. I'm still trying to figure out which one is best for Wolfie's Dyna Ghost. On pedigree, you would think it would be turf being kin to Sadler's Joy, but we saw him no match for Mason last time out. His speed is his biggest weapon. He's likely to get to the lead. Uh, Louis Saez is likely to drop the anchor, but he's going to have to do a lot better than last time. 
Yeah, right. I mean, he's obviously better than that race. Um, you, you know, your question is a valid one, though. Which surface is his best one? You know, I think it is still kind of up in the air personally. Um, whatever his best is, his best surface is, I don't think it's turf. I mean, I really don't like any of his turf races, although he's run fine on it in the past. Um, we'll see. He'll run better this time. I still couldn't bet a bet. Before we get to our top selections, please subscribe to the Daily Racing Forum YouTube channel for all the latest DRF TV video offerings. Time for our top pick in the poker. Mason is simply the horse to beat. I don't want to have too much money in against him. Maybe I take a little stab with penalty as the longest price on the morning line, I believe. Uh, that last race didn't do too much off the layoff. I think they were using it as a prep. Yeah, they probably were. We'll see um, if he's good enough. I am not going to try to beat this heavy favorite, Dan. If I did, it would be with Public Sector, who, I again, I don't think he's without a chance in here. Um, I just don't know that it's going to be worth it um, as far as price goes to take the shot. Mike's going with the Chad number one four. I'll see if penalty can take that step forward second off the layoff. But Mason, way the horse to beat in the poker. Saturday's feature at Belmont. Good luck.